How's it going YouTube? My name's Marcus and welcome to Matmoto. This week I'm going to be working on my 1979 BMW R80-7 engine. I'm going to be installing the crankshaft, camshaft, oil pump and rear main seal. So if you're interested in doing something like that yourself or you just want to follow along, I'll be explaining each step in the process as I go. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is work with the crankshaft. It'll be the first thing we're putting in. Getting it right, installing the crankshaft is essential. This is the part that drives the pistons in and out as it rotates, so it's under a lot of pressure. So there's a couple of things that we need to check and make sure that we've got right as we're installing it. What I'm doing here is I'm using a micrometer to measure both faces of the journal to make sure they're still within tolerance. They are within tolerance, which is lucky because it's nearly $2,000 to replace them, which is nearly as much as I paid for the entire motorcycle. Let's get the engine set up and rotated into an easier position for us as we install this crankshaft and camshaft. I'm installing the thrust washer here, which the crankshaft will sit against. This is a really important part of the build. If you go on any forum for BMW airhead builds, if these thrust washers uh, slip out of place, you're in real trouble and you need an engine rebuild. So I'm being very careful here. With it in place, it's time to heat up the engine casing so I can drop the crankshaft in place. This is all about lowering it in nice and steady and gently and making sure it sits on top of that thrust washer properly. I'm rotating it here to make sure everything is sitting well and that everything can turn freely. I'm happy with that, so we can move on to the next step. This is the bearing cover which holds the other bearing for the other end of the crankshaft to hold it steadily in place. So I stuck it in the freezer and I heated up the engine casing again. Taking it out of the freezer, I lower it down and gently, with a little bit of wiggling, get it in place to hold that crankshaft. Now I'm just putting the washers for the four screws in place and then getting the nuts and tightening them on and torquing them to spec. Okay, we've got the crankshaft firmly in place. Now we can move on to the rear main seal. You can see the thrust washer on the crankshaft in the background and we're going to be covering it with the rear main seal. This is what it looks like out of the box. I'm just checking does it fit in place. I bought a tool from Cycleworks to help me install this rear main seal. There's lots of ways you can do it, but this tool is perfect because it just pushes the seal in place. I'm just cleaning the face here with an alcohol wipe just to make sure there's no, no oil or anything in the way. Now I use the Cycleworks tool to install the rear main seal. While I'm doing this, I use the old bolts from the flywheel. I keep the new bolts for when I'm actually installing the flywheel so that I can talk, torque them up to spec. All good, we've got our rear main seal installed. Time to move on to the next step. Now we're going to be looking at putting the oil pump in place. We can see through, this is where the oil pump goes, and it connects onto the back of the camshaft. So we need to lube this hole here because that's where the camshaft, the bottom of the camshaft will poke through when we put it in from the other side. Here I'm lubing everything with a thick engine assembly lube. It's this red lube here that I'm putting on everything. This is the camshaft and it sits below the crankshaft. So after lubing everything, I put some oil on it as well into some of the places that need oiling, and it's time to turn it upside down and drop it into place. The end of that camshaft is going to go through and poke through that hole that we lubed on the other side. And that's where the oil pump is going to connect on. There are two screws to hold the camshaft in place. I'm putting those in now and torquing them to spec. Okay, let's flip the engine back up and it's time to install the oil pump. Before I reinstall the oil pump, I want to give everything a good clean. I haven't had a proper look at these parts yet and it's kind of hard to see what condition they're in until I get all that oil and grime off them. So here, I'm just putting them in a bucket, I'm cleaning them with just soap and water, and then I'm going to put them in an ultrasonic cleaner just to see how clean can I get them, and then I'll be able to inspect them. With the ultrasonic cleaning done, I can already see that they're much, much cleaner than they were. So let's toss them out and see what we've got. The outer race of this oil pump is definitely scuffed. 
there's definitely been some parts maybe some metal in there in the past you can see some scraping um, but I think it's in good enough condition that we can reuse it here what I'm doing is I've put the parts in dry before I lube them this is just to check what the clearance is just to make sure that I don't need to replace this pump from checking on forums the consensus seems to be that it's good to go stick it back in so the same process again get out the engine assembly lube and uh, give everything a good dose and now I'm slipping the oil pump onto the end of the camshaft that poked through from the other side. And now I've got to lube up the outer part of the oil pump and I'm going to slot that place in place as well. If you're watching this video because you're doing a similar build yourself, a good tip here on this outer part of the pump is look for that little indentation in the top and that part faces out. Now we just need to lube the cover that goes on to cover the oil pump. Remember there's a new o-ring that needs to go on top of this before you put it in to make sure that all that oil doesn't leak out. And also I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolts before I put them in. There are four bolts here on this oil pan cover. I put all four in and then screw them in hand tight and then torque them up. They've got very, very low torque settings, so make sure you use an adjustable torque wrench for this because you can over torque them. Okay, the last part of today's build is we're gonna put that CycleWorks tool back onto the end of the crankshaft. What this does is it keeps the crankshaft pressed against that thrust washer that we installed earlier so that it doesn't slip out in between jobs. So what I'll be doing next week is installing the flywheel and I'll be able to take this tool off again. But for now, I'm gonna use those old bolts from the flywheel. I'm gonna just tighten this up by hand and it makes sure that crankshaft is pressed against that thrust washer so we can leave it for a while. So that's it for this week. Thanks for building along with me and I'll hopefully see you next week when I do part two of this engine rebuild. Good luck.